This episode from the life of Sherlock Holmes will be transmitted to our men and women overseas by shortwave and through the worldwide facilities of the Armed Forces Radio Service. Petri Wine brings you... Basil Rathbone and Nigel Bruce in the new adventures of Sherlock Holmes. The Petri family, the family that took time to bring you good wine, invite you to listen to Dr. Watson tell us about an exciting adventure he shared with his old friend, that master detective, Sherlock Holmes. And so while you're getting comfortable, I'd like to tell you about an old, old American custom. The custom of serving a glass of sherry wine before dinner. Petri California Sherry. You know, Petri Sherry is to a good meal what the overture is to a good musical comedy or an opera. Before you sit down at the dinner table, just pour yourself a little glass of Petri Sherry and sip it slowly. Look at that beautiful amber color. Smell the fragrance of those sun-ripened grapes. And taste that fine sherry flavor. You'll agree with me, I'm sure, that Petri Sherry is the best beginning a good meal ever had. And say, if you happen to like your sherry dry, as I do, you'll really like Petri Pale Dry Sherry. Believe me, you can't go wrong with any wine that bears the name Petri, the proudest name in the history of American wines. Now let's drop in on the good Dr. Watson, who's waiting for us in his California ranch house. Good evening, Doctor. Good evening, Mr. Foreman. Come in and make yourself a towel. Thank you, Doctor. Sitting here with the lights off, I see. Have you been getting yourself in the mood for tonight's Sherlock Holmes story? No, my boy, I was watching the sunset. It's quite a beautiful tonight. I Doctor, the sun set over an hour ago. Yes, I know that, young fellow, my lad, I know that. But at my age, a fellow's entitled to take a little snooze after dinner, isn't he? Of course he is, Doctor. And now that we've settled that, how about tonight's story? Well, a very beautiful girl figured prominently in this adventure, Mr. Foreman. Her name was Jasmine Lafleur. Huh? You say that again, Doctor, please? <laughs> I know, my boy, but that was her stage name. When she was a magician's assistant, unfortunately, I never had the opportunity of seeing Jasmine Lafleur in the theater. But I'm told that she was a, a fascinating figure in tights and, and, and spangles. <laughs> when Holmes and I first met her, however, she was uh, dressed a little more conventionally. And her name was then Diana Venering. Lady Venering. Lady Venering? Say, those tights and spangles really paid off, didn't they? Well, how did you and Sherlock Holmes come to meet up with her, Doctor? In rather spectacular style, Mr. Foreman. Miss Lafleur became something of a femme fatale in the early 1900s. First of all, she married Signor Rossoni, the magician for whom she was working. On the wedding night, he was mysteriously stabbed to death. A few months later, Madame Rossoni, very fetching in her widow's weeds, I'm sure, met Sir Wilfred Venering. And, after a whirlwind courtship, she married him. Don't tell me he got murdered, too. He did, Mr. Foreman. Also on the night of the wedding. But this time, the police found a suspect. It was a certain Major Beckworth, cousin of the dead man, and an ardent suitor of the fair Diana. The trial at the Old Bailey was one of the most sensational I ever remember. Sherlock Holmes and I, in, in court on the closing day as a jury, were still considering their verdict. Holmes, the, the jury's been out over eight hours. I bet you they can't agree on a verdict and there'll be a new trial. I think not, old chap. Look, here they come now. You know, there's a strong moral probability of guilt, but I'm sure they'll agree that there's insufficient evidence to convict. Oh, perhaps you're right. Just look at Lady Venering down there ahead of us. What a, what a stunning woman. Yes, and a woman of great poise and courage. Here it comes. Gentlemen of the jury, have you arrived at a verdict? We have, my lord. How say you? Do you find the defendant guilty or not guilty? Not guilty. Exactly. Come on, Watson. Let's get a breath of fresh air. Well, I was wondering, perhaps, if we shouldn't go over and congratulate Lady Venery. On what? The fact that her husband's murderer has not been found? Oh, I suppose you're right. You ever read the book of Turbid, Watson? Turbid? I don't think so. When was it published? Well, a little before our time, old chap. It's an Old Testament story. <laughs> Whatever made you think of it at <laughs> this moment? Well, it's so remarkably... Apposite with the case of Lady Fenring. It deals with a highly peculiar series of murders, seven of them, if I remember correctly. Who was the murderer? 
A jealous demon by the name of Asma Deus who strangled husbands on their wedding nights. Well, judging by the verdict just now, Mr. Beckworth isn't the Asma Deus or whatever you call him in this case. <laughs> Here, now, boy, here. Give me a paper. Thank you, Governor. Thank you. Paper! Paper! Well, Holmes, what does it say? Oh. Wait a minute. Here we are. Listen to this. Oh. Lady Benning, widow of the murdered man, says that she will marry the suspect. Lady Benning told newspaper reporters this afternoon that if Major Beckwith is acquitted... You will marry him before the year is out. Oh, from my soul, Holmes, there's a positive sparkle in your eyes. You read about her. I must admit the lady fascinates me, old chap. I hope before she becomes involved in any further tragedies that we may have the opportunity of meeting her. And something tells me that we will. <laughs> the Sunday papers are certainly having a day over the veteran case, Holmes. <laughs> Did you read them? No, I didn't, Watson. There's a complete life history of Lady Venering in one of them with photographs. It's uh, rather interesting. Really? What are you doing over there, Holmes? Looking out of the window. Ah, yes, yes. You expecting anybody, Holmes? No, come over here, old fellow. Oh, it's a, it's a clergyman. Yes, a very agitated one. Look at the way he's pacing up and down. And looking up at our window, too. Like Joe. What eyes? Yes, there's a fanatical look about him, which suggests either the martyr at the stake or the inquisitor lighting the faggots. Mrs. Hudson's letting him in now. Well, I'll be interested to know what he's come to us about. I can hear footsteps on the stairs here. I'll, I'll go and have a look. How do you do, sir? Uh, come along in, won't you? It's all right, thank you, Mrs. Hudson. You're Mr. Sherlock Holmes? I am, sir, and this is my colleague, Dr. Watson. My name is Whalen, the Reverend Arthur Whalen. How do you do, How sir? How do you do, sir? Sit down, won't you, and uh, tell me what I can do for you. Oh, thank you. Uh, Mr. Holmes, this, uh, this is a very difficult subject to broach. In fact, it's only after intense personal conflict that I've been able to force myself to come to you. May I ask you, are you familiar with the Book of Tobit? Book of Tobit? Gracious me. You, you were talking about that yesterday, Holmes. I see that you've come to consult me about the Venering case. But that's amazing. How did you know? Has Lady Venering been in touch with you? Uh, no, sir, but uh, I'm familiar with the book of Tobit. And Lady Venering's case closely resembles that of the woman Sarah in the Old Testament story. More closely than you realize, Mr. Holmes. Did you know that before each one of Lady Venering's husbands was killed, they received a threatening note? Yes, I recall that from the trial. Signed in some sort of gibberish, weren't they? No, Doctor. Yesterday I was permitted for the first time to examine one of these notes. The apparent gibberish was, in reality, ancient Hebrew writing. Indeed. Were you able to translate it? Yes, Mr. Holmes. In effect, it said, If you go through with this marriage, your hours are numbered. And it was signed, Asmodeus. Oh. The name of the jealous demon who strangled husbands in the Book of Tobit. Exactly. Just why have you come to me, sir? I want you to talk to Diana, uh, <laughs> to Lady Vannering, to tell her she must not go through with this new marriage. Murder is stalking her, Mr. Holmes. I have argued with her, prayed with her, implored her to realize her danger. But she is adamant. Ah, I'm afraid I should feel extremely presumptuous in giving her my advice. No, Mr. Holmes. I have prepared the way for you. You could, I'm sure, make her realize her danger. And she's willing to see me, you say? Willing and anxious. Oh, very well. But I'd like to ask you a few questions first. Anything, Mr. Holmes. What is your interest in her? She is, she's a member of my flock. She needs my guidance. Nothing further? No, no, Mr. Holmes. Well, I, I believe that you uh, performed the marriage ceremony at both of her previous weddings. Yes. Are you proposing to officiate the uh, ceremony if she marries Major Beckwith? Well, I... Uh, I don't know. I'm hoping that marriage will never take place. And so I want you to help me, Mr. Holmes. Hmm. Where does the lady live? 47, Barclay Square. Very well. Uh, Dr. Watson and I will call on her this afternoon. Mm, delighted to, delighted to. I doubt if I can be there myself. In fact, Diana might speak more freely if I'm not. Yes. But uh, here's my, my card. Oh, thank you. You'll God. know where to get in touch with me if you want to. Very well, sir. Good day to you, gentlemen. And I, I'm greatly in your debt. Well, good day, sir. Good day. Hmm. Strange business, Holmes. I, I can't believe that Mr. Whalen's motives are entirely impersonal. Nor can I, old chap. <laughs> hmm? <laughs> what are you laughing about? I was thinking of the book of Tobit once. Hmm? 
In that, the role of protector, the role I have just been asked to take, uh, was played by the Archangel Raphael. I can't help feeling, Watson, that I'm making distinct strides in my profession. Mr. Sherlock Holmes, I'm so glad to meet you. How do you do, Lady Venering? May I introduce my old friend, Dr. Watson? How are you, Dr. Watson? I'm awfully glad to meet you, Lady Venering. <laughs> uh, let's sit down, shall we? You're just in time for oh, tea. Thank you. Um, you know why we're here, of course. Oh, naturally. Mr. Whalen came round here as soon as he'd left you. Uh, you are to persuade me to look after my mortal affairs uh, while he takes care of my immortal ones. Isn't that it? <laughs> he takes care of put, Lady Venering. <laughs> uh, may I say, Mr. Holmes, that I'm flattered that a man of your eminence should be sufficiently interested to bother about me. You underestimate your own importance, Lady Venering. Though I may mention that if your problem had been as simple as Mr. Whaler made it out to be, I might have been otherwise engaged. You are being very frank and a little mysterious. Are you suggesting that Mr. Whalen didn't tell you everything? I am. And I hope you will be more candid with me. <laughs> Sherlock Holmes, I like you. <laughs> You're most refreshing. Uh, milk and sugar in your tea? Uh, just milk, thank you. Here you are. How about you, Dr. Watson? Oh, just the same way, please. Hey, thank you, my dear. And now, Mr. Holmes, perhaps you'll tell me why you think that you haven't been told everything. Before I answer that, uh, Lady Venering, I wonder if I might ask you some questions. But of course. Anything. When your first husband... Uh, Signor Rossoni was killed. Did the police find any suspects? Uh, yes, one. Ferdinand Gautier, a young man who had been an assistant in our magician's act. A stupid, good-looking boy who thought he was in love with me. But, of course, Inspector Lestrade had to release him. There was no evidence. Inspector Lestrade? Well, you can bet that if he arrested him, <laughs> the boy was innocent. A warning note was found among your husband's effects, wasn't it? Yes. And it was signed in Hebrew with the name Asmodeus. Uh, but perhaps you're not familiar with the Book of Tobit. Oh, yes, yes, sir, I am. I'm familiar with it, Lady Venering. Uh, how did you know then that the Hebrew letters signified that name? Mr. Whelan translated them for me. Oh, I see. And also read me the Book of Tobit. Uh, he's always been particularly fond of that book. Perhaps because it illustrates his own ideas on the dangers of marriage. Well, Holmes told us that he hadn't seen one of the warning notes until yesterday. Precisely. Lady Venering. I read in the papers that you intend to marry Major Beckwith, the man who has just been tried for your late husband's murder. Yes, Mr. Holmes. When are you going to marry him, may I ask? When it pleases me. Doesn't it occur to you that uh, a great deal of comment will be caused, also that Major Beckwith's life is in obvious danger? Of course it occurs to me, my dear man. But because of two tragic marriages, am I to spend the rest of my life alone, as Mr. Whelan would have me do? I'm young, alive. Peter, what are you doing here? I just arrived back in England today, Diana. What's this I read about you marrying Beckwith? Peter, I have guests. Mr. Sherlock Holmes and Dr. Watson. This is Peter McComas, one of our most promising young painters. Oh, Diana, tell me it isn't true. When I left England, you loved me, and I you. I come back and what do I find? You're planning to marry Beckwith. Well, I won't stand for it. If you think you can throw me over like some silly boy, you're very much mistaken. I can tell things, you know. I can tell lots of things. Get out of here, Peter. Get out. Diana. And don't come back until you've learned manners and discretion. But, but Diana... Get out. I'm sorry, gentlemen. Were there any more questions you wanted to ask me, Mr. Holmes? Uh, one, Lady Bennering. Uh, where is your fiancé, Major Beckwith? He's upstairs. Uh, I'm letting him stay here until the scandal of the trial has died down. I must see him at once. At once? Why, Holmes? He's in no danger until the marriage takes place? The marriage has taken place, Watson, unless what? I'm very much mistaken. What makes you think so, Mr. Holmes? You're much too discreet and intelligent, Lady Venering, to let him stay here in your house unless you were already married. <laughs> we were married this morning. But we planned to keep the fact a secret for a few months until the scandal had died down. May I talk to him, please? Of course. I'll ring for the butler and ask him to come down. May I ask, uh, madam, who married you? The Reverend Arthur Whelan, of course. Oh, and all the time he talked to us today, he knew perfectly well that this marriage had taken place. He must have just come from it. I don't trust that man, Holmes. Oh, there you are, Hudson. I just rang for you. Uh, will you ask Major Beckwith? Excuse to... me, my lady. I, 
I was just on my way to telephone the police. The police? What do you mean? It's Major Beckwith, my lady. He's been stabbed to death in his bath. Mr. Beckwith murdered, too. Hodgson, I'll telephone the police. By now, I'm rather well acquainted with Inspector Lestrade. Excuse me, gentlemen. A dreadful business, Holmes. A third husband murdered on his wedding day. But what a woman, Watson. She's superb, magnificent. What on earth do you mean, Holmes? What courage. What unconquerable spirit in the face of a fresh tragedy. Watson, she fascinates me. I haven't seen such a splendid female since we solved that case for the Club of Bohemia. Dr. Watson's story will continue in just a few seconds. Time enough to remind you that the easiest way to make good food taste better is to serve that good food with a swell Petri wine. And there are two Petri wines in particular just made to go with food. Petri California Sautern, a delicate white wine with a subtle flavor that's perfect with chicken and fish. And Petri California Burgundy, a hearty, rich red wine that's out of this world with any meat or meat dish. So if you want to know just how good a cook you are, serve your good food with Petri wine made to go with it. A Petri Burgundy or a Petri Sautern. Two swell Petri mealtime wines. And now back to tonight's new Sherlock Holmes adventure. The famous detective and his old friend Dr. Watson have become involved in the affairs of thrice-married Diana, one-time magician's assistant. Each of her husbands has been mysteriously murdered on his wedding day, the latest murder occurring on the same day that Sherlock Holmes and Dr. Watson are brought into the case. As we rejoin our story, it's a month later, and for some obscure reason, Sherlock Holmes seems to have lost interest in the case, though not in the beautiful Diana. Mr. Holmes. Yes, Mr. Stard? It's over a month now since Major Beckwith was murdered, and we haven't found a single clue to work. Do you expect me to supply the deficiencies of Scotland Yard? Well, it's unlikely not to help us, Mr. Holmes. And after all, you and Dr. Watson were in the house when it happened. If you ask me, the murderer's either McComas, that Irish painter, or the clergyman Whalen. What do you think, sir? As far as I'm concerned, the case is closed, Lestrade, and I wish you'd stop bothering me. What do you think I am, nothing but a detecting machine? Mr. Holmes, whatever's come over you. Holmes, you're not going out again this evening, are you? I'm afraid so, old chap. Well, this will be the fourth night in a row. I was hoping that we might have a nice, quiet evening in front of the fire. Oh, I'm sorry, Watson, but I promised to take Diana to the horse show at Olympia. I should be home by midnight. Mr. Holmes. Oh, yes, Mr. Whelan? You're seeing altogether too much of Diana. She seems to be completely under your spell. But you introduced me to her in the first place with a request that I keep an eye on her. I made a great mistake. As her spiritual protector, I'm afraid I must ask you to stop seeing her. I'm afraid I must ask you, sir, to mind your own business. I say, Holmes, have you seen the paper that that violinist, the Zywe, is playing at the Albert Hall tonight? Uh, no, I haven't looked at the paper today. Oh, I thought perhaps that we might go along and see Oh, I'm afraid I can't hold you up. No, I'm taking Diana to the French maid at Dahlia's Theatre. I hear it's a, a charming musical comedy. <laughs> Here, Holmes. We've been friends for a good many years now. Very true, old fellow. And I think I'm entitled to speak to you straight from the shoulder. Of course you are, Watson. Very well, then. This Diana Beckworth. Oh. Oh, yes, it's your own business, I suppose. But I can't bear to see her making such a fool of you. You've neglected your work entirely since you met her. You get about as though you're a young fellow of 20. What's come over you, Holmes? Stop, stop pacing about, old chap, will you, and sit down. In fact, uh, it might be a good idea if you fortified yourself with a nip of brandy from the tantalus there. Uh, what I'm about to tell you uh, may be something of a shock. Um, Watson, uh, uh, Diana and I are getting married tomorrow. What did you say, Al? Um, I'm getting married tomorrow. But uh, you're insane. Oh, that's not very flattering, Watson. Anyway, I don't see why you should be so surprised. You, you... You yourself married and left Baker Street once, didn't you? For you, Holmes, a confirmed woman. Oh, no, 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 my dear Watson, no, indeed, no. You will remember in our adventure that you titled A Scandal in Bohemia, I met a lady that I have often referred to as a, oh, the woman. You mean Irene Adler, but she was a criminal. Exactly, and yet Diana has the same magnificent characteristics. Keen intelligence, courage, 
An unconquerable spirit. At home, three of her husbands murdered on their wedding nights. You're proposing to be the fourth. Oh, rubbish, my dear fellow, because tragedy has attended her previous marriages. Is she to go through life alone? Holmes, you... Uh, you really mean it, don't you? Of course I do. I think I will have a nip of brandy. Oh, don't take it so badly, old fellow. We'll continue to see a lot of each other. Diana's very fond of you, you know. Oh, really? I'm, I'm glad. Who's going to perform the ceremony? Not the... The Reverend Mr. Whaler. Oh, no, 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 no. We decided, in view of Diana's previous marriages, that he might prove to be a trifle, uh, well, unlucky. A clergyman named Vernet will officiate. Whalen, of course, insists on being present just the same. Uh, what time is the wedding tomorrow? Two o'clock, old fellow. Oh, uh, I should have mentioned this before. I hope your cutaway coat and top hat are in a good state of preservation. You'll be a pretty prominent figure at the ceremony, you know. You mean that, uh, that... Well, I mean that uh, if Sherlock Holmes gets married, who else could be his best man but his old friend, Dr. Watson? It's elementary, my dear fellow, elementary. I now pronounce man and wife. And those whom God hath joined together, let no man put asunder. to claim the privilege of the best man and <laughs> give you a kiss. Of course you shall, Doctor. It's you, Holmes. You, you, you did this lucky fuller. Of course I am, old chap. <laughs> uh, Sherlock, I'm going upstairs to change my dress now. Very well, Diana. I'll be up shortly. I'll see you later, Dr. Watson. Very well, Mrs. Holmes. <laughs> you know, Holmes, I, I never thought I'd live to say that. Uh, what's no fellow? I'm worried. Worried today? Oh, my dear fellow, what, what's the matter? Well, just before the ceremony, I received one of those warning notes signed by Asmodeus. Oh, you better be careful, Holmes. I think I'll slip out and have a pipe or two on the matter. Yes. Look after my guests for me, will you? And keep your eyes open and your ears. Yes, I will indeed. Uh, there you are, Mr. Whelan. Would you care for a glass of champagne or a punch or something or other? Thank you, no, Doctor. I'm in no mood for celebration. I'm certain that Diana has made a shocking mistake. Well, really, sir, I don't think... I only came here in a last-minute attempt to dissuade her. Now that I've failed, I shall leave. Good day, sir. Hello. Dr. Watson? Oh, hello, McCormick. Where's Mr. Holmes? We'll be back in a few minutes. Would you care for a glass of champagne, sir? Thank you. I should like to drink a toast to the pair. I've been in love with Diana for years, you know, but she wouldn't marry me, and well, I suppose I might as well make the best of it. I must say, your friend Sherlock Holmes seems like a splendid fellow. He is indeed, McComas. In fact, I may say... Watson. Excuse me, sir. All right, Holmes, I'm coming. Up here. What's the matter, Holmes? Follow me. Lock the door behind you. Allow me to introduce you to the demon Asmodeus, Watson. Unfortunately, at the moment, she's in a faint. Good Lord. It's Diana. Exactly. Always an impetuous woman, she made the mistake of trying to stab me with that knife. So I bent over to strap up a suitcase. She didn't allow for the wall mirror in which I was watching her. You mean you suspected her all along? Of course I did, old fellow. The problem was to find the proof. I first suspected her when I knew that she had been a magician's assistant. The key to the profession of magic is misdirection, and these murders have been a perfect example of misdirection motive. How do you mean, Holmes? Well, by creating a... Thanks to the well-meaning stories of... Uh, the Reverend Mr. Whalen, whose theological libraries, she must have copied the Hebrew signature. She focused the murders on jealousy, concealing the fact that the one person with a perfect motive was herself, the widow who was to inherit. Oh, why hasn't she been caught before? Because she was clever, devilishly clever. She left no clues except an indirect one that I had once spotted, that the likeliest person to be able to approach a bridegroom unsuspected and stab him is his bride. Now I wish you'd see if you can revive her, old fellow. When the police get here, I should like Mrs. Holmes to be in full possession of all her faculties. Well, Holmes, I must say I never expected to be driving back with you to Baker Street on your wedding day. <laughs> I can't tell you I have a fear. Dear old Watson, you really thought that I deserted you, didn't you? Oh, naturally, I wish you'd tell me the truth, Why well, I couldn't tell anyone, not even you. If the faintest shadow of suspicion had entered her mind, I'd never have caught her. Well, it seems to me you paid a pretty high price, Holmes. 
You told me you made a will in her favor. Supposing something happens to you before her trial, she'd get the money, you know. Oh, the will? Oh, no, that was worthless. I told Diana that it was a holographic will and perfectly valid. Well, what on earth is a holographic will? Uh, a will drawn up in uh, one's own handwriting on a piece of perfectly plain paper. Such a document is quite legal, but I drew mine up on a paper with, uh, well, with a letterhead. That made it um, invalid. Oh, I see, but the fact remains that you are married, Holmes. <laughs> I, I really fooled you completely, didn't I, Watson? Uh, uh, didn't the name of the clergyman who married us suggest anything to you? The Reverend Verne? No, and why not should it? Well, Verne was a French painter of some note. He also happens to have been a great uncle of mine, and, um, you... Mycroft's. You mean that... That your brother Mycroft was a clergyman? I mean that Mycroft was disguised as a clergyman. And a very convincing job he did, too. A more satisfactory clergyman than the Reverend Mr. Whalen, no doubt, whose possible complicity may compel him to answer some very awkward questions. Then you're not married. Well, upon my soul, Holmes, I, I, I don't know what to say. Then I suggest that you say nothing, my dear chap. Let's just sit back quietly, as two good friends can, and brood about the uh, mutability of human affairs. <laughs> Well, Doctor, tonight's adventure was really a little extraordinary, to say the least. Holmes sure had a narrow escape. A uh, doubly narrow, Mr. Foreman, doubly narrow. He not only escaped the, the jaws of death, but he also escaped the, the clutches of matrimony. Actually, the story had a happy ending for everybody but Lady Venering. Uh, uh, Jasmine Lafleur. What about that artist fellow, McComas? How did he take it? Oh, very well, very well indeed. In fact, in gratitude, he even painted Holmes's portrait. Not exactly a good likeness, though. One of those modern artist who paints his impressions of a person rather than a portrait. What do you mean? Well, now, let me see. If he were to paint his impression of you, you'd probably end up by looking like a bottle of Petri wine in a sports jacket. Go ahead, Doctor. You can tease me all you want. I'll still rave about Petri wine. And why not? The facts bear me out that Petri wine most certainly is good wine. After all, the Petri family knows all there is to know about the art of turning plump, sun-ripened grapes into fragrant, delicious wine. That's because they've been making wine for generations, ever since they started the Petri business way back in the 1800s. And because the making of Petri wine is a family affair, the family has been able to hand down from father to son, from father to son, all their skill and knowledge and experience. And believe me, that adds up to plenty. So no matter what type of wine you prefer, one to serve with meals or a wine for any special occasion, choose one of the fine Petri wines. You can't miss because Petri took time to bring you good wine. And now, Dr. Watson, what story do you have lined up for us next week? Well, now, let me see, Mr. Foreman. I'm going to tell you about, uh, about a strange adventure that began by my taking a wild cab ride through the moonlit streets of London and ended Holmes and me being trapped in a luxuriously furnished cellar below a furniture warehouse down by the waterfront. <laughs> Tonight's Sherlock Holmes adventure is written by Dennis Green and Anthony Boucher and is based on an incident in the Sir Arthur Conan Doyle story, The Adventure of Shoscombe Old Place. Mr. Rathbone appears through the courtesy of Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer and Mr. Bruce through the courtesy of Universal Pictures, where they are now starring in the Sherlock Holmes series. The Petri Wine Company of San Francisco, California, invites you to tune in again next week, same time, same station. Oh, the Petri family took the time to bring you such good wine. So when you eat and when you cook, remember Petri wine. To make good food tatter, remember... Pet, pet, Petri. This is Bill Foreman saying goodnight for the Petri family. Sherlock Holmes comes to you from our Hollywood studios. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.